guys, Mr. Backwork here. This is part one of lesson 4.6, looking at some other trig graphs. Two objectives for this video. We're gonna sketch graphs of tangent functions and we're gonna do some graphing with cotangent functions. So we're gonna start off graphing a tangent function by just making a table of values. So I've already got a list of x values that we're gonna plug in. We'll plug in negative pi over two, negative pi over four, zero pi over four, and then pi over two. So I guess I'm focusing on this negative pi over two first. The ordered pair there is zero, negative one. And if we think about how we make a tangent fraction, we go y over x, we'd go negative one over zero. Well, we're gonna get an undefined value. And if we think back when we did some graphing with rational functions, anytime we got an undefined value, we had an asymptote on our graph. So I'm gonna let this value be my negative pi over two, we're gonna have a vertical asymptote going through that value. And I'm actually gonna look at this pi over two angle next. The ordered pair at pi over two is zero, one. And if we stack those things up as a fraction, we're gonna get an undefined value again. So at pi over two, there's gonna be another asymptote. Our next x value is gonna be that negative pi over four. The ordered pair there is root two over two, comma, negative root two over two. And if we stack those things up to make our tangent fraction, we'd have negative root two over two over the square root of two over two. And if we take a look at what's going on, essentially we have a number being divided by itself, but the top thing is gonna be negative. So the y value at negative pi over four is negative one. If we look at pi over four, we're gonna have a similar ordered pair this one is gonna be root two over two, comma, root two over two. So if we make that fraction, we've got root two over two over root two over two. So number divided by itself, we get just one as that value. So this is gonna be negative pi over four. We're gonna go down one over here at pi over four. We're gonna go up one. And then I guess we've gotta look at that zero value. The ordered pair at zero is one, zero. So if we make that fraction zero over one, well, we just get zero. So we put a dot there, and now I'm gonna make this curve. So I'm actually gonna start at zero and go off to the right and hit this other point. But then we've got an asymptote happening, so our graph is gonna go almost straight up at that point. If we start at zero and head the other direction, we've gotta hit this point that we found, and we've got another asymptote, so we're gonna go almost straight down there. So there is one cycle of our tangent graph. Taking a look at some general characteristics of tangent functions. There are some things that are gonna be a little bit different than those sine and cosine graphs that we were just looking at. I guess looking at the period first, uh, for a tangent graph, the period is gonna be just pi. That's how long it takes for these tangent graphs to start repeating themselves. Whereas if we compare that to our sine and cosine, that was two pi. Our range is gonna be negative infinity to positive infinity. So all of those y values will show up somehow as an answer. We are gonna have some domain issues, and we kinda of saw that on the last example because we had asymptotes happening, and remember domain and asymptotes are related to each other. So for this tangent graph, just the general tangent, our domain is gonna be all x values that are not equal to that pi over two plus some n times pi kinda of half rotation thing, because that's where we have x values being zero, and then the bottom of the fraction would end up being zero. So like I said, our vertical asymptote stuff very much related to the domain. Those vertical asymptotes are just happening everywhere that we have a domain issue on the graph. When we start graphing out these tangent functions, we're actually gonna look for those vertical asymptotes first. So here's just the general form for our tangent function. Looks very similar to those sine and cosines that we were looking at. In order to find our two vertical asymptotes that we're gonna graph out, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that bx minus c stuff inside of the parentheses and first set it equal to negative pi over two, and then we'll solve to get x all by itself. To find our next vertical asymptote, we'll take that same bx minus c stuff, but this time set it equal to positive pi over two, and again, solve for x. So looking at this example we've got, we're gonna look for the vertical asymptotes for the equation y equals the tangent of x over two. So if we're looking at that bx minus c stuff, I guess we're focusing on this x over two. I'm gonna first set that equal to negative pi over two, and then I'll set it equal to positive pi over two, and we'll go through and solve each one. Now what I see happening over here is division by two, so in order to get rid of that, we'll just multiply both sides by two. So left-hand side becomes x equals 
those twos cancel out and we get negative pi for that asymptote. If we do the same thing to the other equation, multiply by two on both sides, we get x equals positive pi. So this y equals the tangent of x over two would have an asymptote at negative pi and positive pi. Last group of characteristics, uh, the period for a tangent graph is gonna be the distance between those two asymptotes. We're also gonna have an x-intercept directly in the middle between those asymptotes. And then the last thing, there is no defined amplitude for our tangent equations because they go down to negative infinity and up to positive infinity. So here we go, in this example, we're gonna sketch the graph for y equals the tangent of x over four. First thing I'm gonna do is figure out where those asymptotes are located. So I'm gonna go x over four equals negative pi over two, and then I'll go x over four equals positive pi over two, and just solve each one of those. Over here, I'm gonna multiply by four on both sides. So fours cancel out, we get x equals, if we take negative pi over two times four, we're gonna get negative two pi. On our other equation, if we multiply both sides by four, just like we were doing before, fours cancel out, we get x equals, and pi over two times four is two pi. So we're gonna have an asymptote at negative two pi and positive two pi. And I'm gonna let these values out on the far ends be my negative two pi and positive two pi. So vertical asymptotes there. Now on the last page we said there's gonna be an x-intercept at the midpoint between these two asymptotes. Well directly between negative two pi and positive two pi is zero, so we've got an x-intercept there. Now in order to find our next points to plot out, I'm actually gonna do another midpoint idea. Halfway between zero and two pi is pi. I'm gonna plug pi in for x. Tangent of pi over four, well that's just one. So I'll plot that out on my grid at pi. I said we were up at one. And then I'm gonna do another midpoint idea on the negative side. Well between zero and negative, two pi is negative pi. If we plug in negative pi for our x value, we're gonna get back negative one as the answer. So we're gonna use these points to draw our graph. Go from zero out to that point on the right, and then our asymptote makes our graph go straight up. Go from zero to that point on the left, and asymptote makes our graph go straight down. In our next example, we've got y equals negative tangent of two x. I'm gonna start by finding those asymptotes again. So I'm gonna take the two x and set that equal to negative pi over two, and take two x, set that equal to pi over two. In order to solve these, we'll have to divide both sides by two. So we'll get x equals, well, negative pi over two split in half is negative pi over four. Similar things on the right-hand side, divide by two on both sides, we get x equals positive pi over four. So I'm gonna say this right here is my negative pi over four, and we'll go vertical asymptote through that value. Out here will be positive pi over four, and we'll go vertical asymptote through that value. Remember, midpoint between those things, we've got an x-intercept, so halfway between negative pi over four and positive pi over four is zero, x-intercept there. I'm gonna go halfway between these things, between zero and pi over four is pi over eight, and I'm gonna plug that into the equation. So two times pi over eight is pi over four. Tangent of pi over four is one, but we have to remember that there's a negative out in front of here, so it's negative one. So at pi over eight, I'm gonna go down to negative one, and I'm gonna draw in that portion of the curve right away. Looks like we're heading down this time. If we head in the negative direction, so right here at negative pi over eight, plug that in, well two times negative pi over eight is negative pi over four. Tangent of negative pi over four is negative one, but negative out in front, double negative makes that a positive one. So at negative pi over eight, we are up at one, and this portion of the curve is heading up this time. One more example for graphing tangent equations, we've got y equals one fourth tangent of x. Looking for those asymptotes, we'd go x equals negative pi over two. Well, that was pretty easy. Let's say negative pi over two is right here, vertical asymptote. If we go x equals pi over two, again, that one's pretty easy. So let's say pi over two is right there, and asymptote, halfway between negative pi over two and positive pi over two is zero, so we've got an x-intercept there. Halfway between zero and pi over two is gonna be pi over four, and I'm gonna plug that into my equation. Tangent of pi over four is one, but we've got a one-fourth out in front, 
So at pi over 4, we get 1 fourth as our answer. Uh, let's say up here is 1, so that means this first line right here would represent 1 fourth. So this right-hand portion of our graph is heading up. If we look on the negative side, let's make this negative pi over 4. We're going to plug that in. Tangent of negative pi over 4 is negative 1. And if we multiply by that 1 fourth out in front, we're going to get negative 1 fourth. So let's say negative 1 is down here. So then this would be negative a fourth. And our left-hand side of the graph is going down. I also want to talk a little bit about cotangent equations. These are going to be very similar to tangent equations, but we are going to have to make one change. Uh, period is still going to be pi, because that's how long it takes for this cotangent to repeat itself. Range goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. The thing that's going to change is where those domain issues and vertical asymptotes happen. This time it's going to happen at multiples of pi, so like 0, 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi unless we start moving those things, which we're going to look at when we do an example. Since the asymptotes moved, we're going to change how we find those things for cotangent. So we've got a general equation, y equals the cotangent of bx minus c. To find our vertical asymptotes, this time we're going to take bx minus c and set it equal to 0 and pi, and we'll solve there. Vertical asymptotes are going to happen where that sign value is 0 or the y value for the ordered pair is 0, so that's why we're looking at 0 and pi. I've got one cotangent graphing equation, so y equals the cotangent of x over 2. To find that asymptote, we'll take x over 2 and set it equal to 0, and x over 2 equals pi. Multiply both sides by 2, we're going to get an asymptote at x equals 0, so right along this y-axis. Over here, we're going to get an asymptote at 2 pi, once we do a little multiplication. So let's say 2 pi is out here. Now very similar to that tangent, at the midpoint between 0 and 2 pi, or between these asymptotes, we're going to have an x-intercept. So right here is going to represent pi. I'm going to put my x-intercept there, and then I'm going to do more midpoint stuff. Halfway between 0 and pi is pi over 2, and I'm going to plug that into the equation. Pi over 2 divided by 2 is pi over 4. Cotangent of pi over 4 is 1. So we'll be right here. The left piece of the graph is heading up. Between pi and 2 pi is 3 pi over 2. And if we take 3 pi over 2 divided by 2, that's going to be 3 pi over 4. And the cotangent there is negative 1. So the right-hand portion of the graph is going to head down. So that's going to be the last example for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.